In today's software engineering era, large language models and AI tools are doing a lot of heavy lifting in generating and assisting with code. Understanding fundamentals like multiprocessing is still essential. Why? Because knowing how to optimize code for efficiency can be a game changer, especially in data heavy or repetitive tasks. In this video, we're going to look at how we can speed up your data workflow by at least five times faster with multiprocessing by adding two lines of code in Python. Multiprocessing is the practice of running multiple processes simultaneously, each of which operates independently and can utilize separate CPU cores. This approach enables programs to handle complex tasks in parallel, leading to significant performance improvements especially on multi-core systems. Multiprocessing is particularly useful for CPU-bound tasks, those that require heavy computations, since it allows workloads to be distributed across multiple CPU cores, enabling faster execution by running parts of the program at the same time. Comparing two threads, multiprocessing differs fundamentally in how it handles memory and concurrency. Threads share the same memory space within a single process, which makes communication between them faster but can also lead to complications, such as data corruption if threads try to modify shared data at the same time. Additionally, because of Python's global interpreter lock, only one thread can execute Python bytecode at a time, which limits the performance of CPU bound tasks on multi core systems. In summary, Multiprocessing creates separate process with independent memory, allowing true parallel execution on multiple cores and bypassing Python's GIL, making it ideal for CPU-bound tasks, such as processing large datasets or performing complex mathematical calculations, like matrix multiplications. Threading, by contrast, operates within a single process with shared memory, limited by the GIL and is better suited for IO-bound tasks involving weights on external resources, such as handling multiple network requests or reading from files. Now let's look at how we can use multiprocessing to run multiple workloads simultaneously to expedite the runtime. Here in my folder, I have 767 HTML files. Each file contains the sole products listed on eBay. And let's pretend that I am a junior data engineer and I wrote a script to go through each file individually, scrape the product detail, and combine them into a single CSV file. Now, let me run the script to see how much time it takes to run the script. Okay, the script took 993 seconds, which is almost 17 minutes, a pretty intensive workload to process all the files. Going back to the script, import the pool function from multiprocessing. In the main routine, the list comprehension here iterates through each file applying the process HTML file function to perform the workload task on each file. The outputs from processing all files are then combined into a single list. Let's comment out the list comprehension. Instead, use the pool function to create a pool of workers. In this case, I will set the worker count to 10. Each worker here represents a CPU core. So I am allocating 10 CPU cores to process the files. Depending on your processor, you may even be able to run 20 or 30 workers in parallel. Use the map method to apply the process HTML file function to each file. The map function will automatically distribute the workload among the 10 processes in the pool and combine the results in a list. Because the workflow to process each file is identical, by using multiprocessing, we can allocate the workload across multiple CPU cores to process multiple files simultaneously, 
significantly reducing the overall execution time. Now let's run the script again to see how much time it takes this time. And this time, it took 69 seconds which is about 14 times faster than the previous run. There you have it. With two lines of code, we significantly reduced the processing time for our data workflow using multiprocessing. Keep in mind that while multiprocessing can significantly boost performance for tasks that are CPU intensive and can be split into parallel chunks, it isn't always the best solution. Some operations especially those that involve a lot of waiting, such as reading files or making API calls, don't see speed improvements with parallel processing. In fact, for tasks that are not CPU bound, the overhead involved in creating and managing separate processes can actually slow things down. And that's all for this video. I hope you found the tip helpful. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.